Welcome to the ABCs of Herbal Extractions. My name is Gail Engels and I'm the Special Projects Director for the American Botanical Council. Once you have finished your oil and have strained the plant material out of it, you want to bottle it in glass, cap it tightly, label it with what it is, what kind of oil you extracted it in, and the date, and then store it in a cool, dark place. You should only make what you're going to use in a year, unless you're making it for um, to give as gifts or something like that. And you want to check for rancidity often, because you don't want a rancid oil to put on your skin. Oils have a shorter shelf life than some things, but you can add um, a CO2 extraction of rosemary and that will extend the shelf life. Tinctures are alcoholic extracts of plant material. and This might be what a lot of people are familiar with because you see tinctures in the health food stores all the time of all different kinds of plants. Alcohol tinctures last a long time, years, many, many years. I've known people who were using tinctures that they had made seven to ten years before and they felt like they were still as active as they were when they first made them. Alcohol extracts more types of constituents than any other solvent except water. So alcohol is really good for making a stable tincture that's going to last a long time and keep its potency. The higher the alcohol content of the menstruum, that would be the percentage or the proof that you see on the bottle, the greater the extraction potential and the better the result. Some herbal medicine makers recommend pure grain alcohol. You might know this as Everclear. That's one of the brands because it's the highest proof. Everclear isn't available everywhere and some people don't like it. So vodka is fine to make an herbal tincture. Glycerates. So glycerates are like tinctures, only they're made with glycerin instead of alcohol. So they're excellent for children and alcohol intolerant people. Glycerates can be easily diluted in water, like I was saying about the peppermint glycerate, which makes a really nice cup of tea and you can carry it in your bag so that you have it with you and you don't have to worry about carrying a big old bag of peppermint or tea bags. Glycerates are sweet. Some people don't like them because they're sweet, but they don't contain sugar. They're not a carbohydrate. So they're slowly absorbed into the blood and metabolized by the liver so they don't cause a blood sugar spike. Glycerin only has half the solvent power of ethyl alcohol. So it's not going to extract as much of the good chemical constituents from the plant material. So frequently you have to use more plant material than you would if you were making an ethyl alcohol tincture. Also, glycerates are not, glycerin is not suitable for extracting resinous or oily herbs. So if you're using fresh herbs, you'd use approximately 80% glycerin, 20% water, and with dried herbs it would be 60 to 70% glycerin and 30 to 40% water because that water is replacing the water that's been dried out of the herb. It has, glycerates have shorter shelf life, maybe one to two years, but longer if you add about 10% alcohol and that's not enough to really change the flavor profile. Cordials and elixirs, what is the difference? Sometimes these terms are used interchangeably, but they are somewhat different. Cordials are stimulating beverages that are shared between friends and loved ones to invoke a sense of well-being, hence the term cordial. They are meant to warm, stimulate, and aid digestion. So they're frequently, ha you frequently drink them just before or just after you eat. Elixir, the word comes from an Arabic word, meaning an effective recipe. They are clear, sweet liquids used for medicinal purposes. An elixir should contain at least one active ingredient. Frequently it's a tonic herb which will balance and nourish body systems and organs and can be taken over a long period of time with no concern. Some tonic herbs are listed on this page. They are herbs that enhance function and improve resistance of a specific body or tissue system. 
So some of them are ginseng, astragalus, hawthorn, really good for the heart in a very gentle way, schisandra, elderberry, really good for the, the immune system, helps stave off cold and flu and shorten the symptoms and duration. Holy basil, which is what is shown in the uh, kind of strange picture on the right. Um, holy basil is really good for cold and flu. It's an analgesic. It helps with pain. It's just got all kinds of, of uses. And I encourage you to find out more about these plants before you start playing around with them. And then, of course, all of the mints. Bitters. Bitters have become really popular in the past few years. They are alcoholic extracts of aromatic herbs, barks, roots, and fruits for their flavor and medicinal purposes. They were originally developed as patent medicines um, back in the olden days. Um, currently, they're consumed either straight up in, in a glass or with a little ice at the end of a meal for digestive purposes. They're also used to flavor cocktails. They've become really popular for that recently. And they may have actually been the original cocktail. Wines and vinegars. This is another way to make herbal extracts. Medicated wines have been taken over the years in moderation with food, specifically during convalescence to help a person to speed up the healing process. They're very uplifting to the spirit. The one on the right in the picture is a sherry that is infused, being infused with garlic scapes, which are the flowers of the garlic. And when you're growing garlic, you want to cut those off. You don't want to let the garlic bloom. So we just took a bunch one year, cut them off at the base of the plant, uh, down below the leaves, stuck them in a bottle, and filled the bottle up with sherry. And it makes a wonderful garlic flavor, mildly garlic flavored sherry that you can use in cooking or to make um, salad dressing or something like that. Vinegars can be used in food preparation to further enhance your intake of the beneficial properties of plants because it's really hard sometimes to get a therapeutic dose of plants in food. So the more you incorporate some of these things like garlic, actually all the alliums, um, rosemary, which is an antioxidant, a lot of these herbs, the more you include them in your food, in your normal dietary intake, uh, the more it's going to help you. Um, I would caution you to use only premium quality wines and vinegars. If it's a wine that you wouldn't drink, then don't use it to make an extraction either. Shrubs. Shrubs are an interesting extract. Uh, the word is maybe derived from the Arabic word sharab, which means drink or juice, or shariba, meaning wine. Um, the term shrub can refer to a number of different things. It may refer to a sweetened drinking vinegar. It may refer to a soft drink made by combining a drinking vinegar with a sparkling water. That's what you have going on in this iced drink here. Or it can be a cocktail made using a drinking vinegar as a mixer. So it has a lot of different uses. Um, so shrubs are concentrated fruit or vegetable infused vinegars. So they're very intense. So you would fill up your jar with um, berries, whatever it is you're going to use, and then cover it with a, a nice vinegar. It might be a champagne vinegar. Um, you might want to use an apple cider vinegar. But uh, you want to use a good quality vinegar. And when it's done, actually shrubs were invented as a way of preserving produce back in pre-refrigeration days. So they would pour off the liquid, save that to have as drinks to be drunk as tonics, uh, and then they would go ahead and eat that uh, fruit or vegetable that they had taken out of there. So they can made, be made for fun, and I've had 
ones that were like a lavender mixed berry shrub, one that was made with pineapple and fresh basil. I've had a fresh apple in apple cider vinegar and a rosemary mint one. One of the most common ones and the one that's shown at the, in this picture is an elderberry shrub. So it's medicinal and it's made to drink throughout the winter to help stave off colds and flus or to help get over colds and flus. And it tastes good too. It's got a little bit of the bite of the vinegar, but when it's watered down in some sparkling water, you don't notice that so much. And it's really good for you, and elderberries are very safe. So, free fire cider. Fire cider is a fabulous um, extract that has been being made for decades by various people, various herbalists. And it can be a, a combination of a number of things, but the items lifted, listed here are some of the most common ones. You start with apple cider vinegar and you chop up garlic, ginger, cayenne peppers, horseradish, and parsley or whatever other herbs you might want to use. So the fiery kick that lingers in your mouth when you eat certain foods can be attributed to chemicals found in those foods. The heat we feel is a nerve response which stimulates the central nervous system to produce physical reactions such as vasodilation, sweating, flushing. This stimulation also affects the mucous membranes and can help clear congested sinuses. For example, the capsaicinoids in peppers are the most widely enjoyed for that kind of spice. Other chemical compounds found in foods cause a somewhat different sensation that still triggers the reaction we call hot. These include allicin and disulfate in garlic and onions, gingerols in ginger, and isothiocyanates found in horseradish. Each of these constituents is included in the appropriately named fire cider vinegar. But they do more for your body than just tingle your tongue. Herbalists have been making this medicinal concoction for clearing sinuses, warming the body, easing digestion, as well as for a winter tonic to be imbibed each day throughout fall and winter. Each ingredient provides specific health benefits. Um, we have at the American Botanical Council a fire cider vinegar recipe that we're happy to share with you. Uh, the notes that go along with this webinar have that recipe in them. You can also find numerous uh, fire cider vinegar recipes online. And um, you want to start small when you take fire cider and test your tolerance. So like a half a teaspoon and a little water, tomato juice is a good way to start if you're treating sinus congestion, digestive complaints, or as a tonic. Um, and then you can build up from there. A teaspoon three to five times a day for acute conditions and one to three times a day as a tonic is an often recommended dosage. You can mix it. Half and half, uh, half and half with olive oil to make a simple but surprisingly good salad dressing. It can be used to marinate in sweet and sour soup, in stir fries, and it's good all by itself on cooked greens and other vegetables. You can also rub it into sore joints and muscles, but you want to be sure to keep it away from those sensitive mucous membranes and broken skin. So I want to thank you for watching this webinar. I hope you've learned something from it. I hope maybe it's stimulated you to try something new, learn something new. And if you're ever in Austin, Texas, I hope you'll come by and visit us, see our gardens, and drink a tisane with us. Thank you.